welcome to my Wild Knitting Podcast. This is episode 9, can you believe it? And my name is Martina Elisabetta. I currently live in the center of Italy. I'll put timestamps in uh, on the description box so you can skip parts if you are not interested in any of the parts that you're not interested in. Well, yeah. In this episode, I'll talk about the giveaway winner, uh, my Finnish objects, uh, my whips, and plans for the future. I, in the previous podcast episode, I decided to do a small giveaway with some of the objects that I make, and uh, so many of you commented commented under that uh, video and it was so hard i mean i used this um kind of giveaway picker random tool that i found online yeah i mean it felt really weird to have to choose one you know specific comment because there were so many that i really felt happy and connected to that I wanted to give something away. I need to drink some coffee because <laughs> I'm drinking coffee in this super tiny, as you can see, it's super tiny, super tiny cup uh, that is, it was hand painted by an artisan around here. Italians, they like to drink their coffee in very, very tiny mugs uh, and cups. I do not necessarily like that. I like to have kind of bigger size cups, but um, it's nice sometimes to be a bit more, you know, more fancy with the pinky like that. <laughs> yeah, so I decided since my brain is just, I think the spring really confused, like creates a lot of confusion in my brain and in my routines and, and so on. It's like this change of the season, but spring especially, it's just like so much beauty, so much that I, um, I need to write things down. So I wrote um, what I'm gonna, tell you what I'm gonna yeah the giveaway winner and so on so I'll put here a screenshot of the the random tool picker giveaway whatever that I used uh, to pick the winner and is she love Kest. sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name correctly I'm probably not pronouncing it correctly um, but I'll put your name on the screen and please contact, in, contact me at uh, martina at wegrowwild.com or either via email or on Instagram at wegrowwild. Um, I'll probably comment on your comment as well so you get the notification. And uh, as I said, it was so hard for me to accept that I had to pick just one uh, person. It's just so weird, especially when so many people wrote beautiful comments and so much kindness and I don't know, I just, it was difficult. Um, but I also have to, because my instinct, uh, like what I would do is like, let me find other objects or let me make more objects so I can pick more than one person uh, uh, but then I know that it's not really healthy for me um, and I will still have to choose fewer people than of course the 231 comments that I received so let's start with the podcast but congratulations anyway uh, she love cast uh, congratulations I really hope you will enjoy my small creations let's start with the podcast i'm gonna tell you first what i'm wearing uh, it's getting a bit chilly in here today i mean the weather has been crazy uh, we've been uh, traveling 
and it was nice but it was so warm compared to here here is like it can get below zero in the night but in the day it's like it depends if it's super windy and rainy and cloudy or if it's sunny day yesterday was i took a long super long walk and uh, it was so nice i had uh, a top that i knitted that i show you i had that on and i was pretty fine pretty warm but anyway i'm um i am wearing the one of my finish objects so i guess this is the what I'm wearing finish object section and this I I like it a lot more than when I finished it when I finished it somehow it was looking strange <laughs> it was very bulky in some section I mean it was it was I had to block it and when I blocked it now it looks nice it's a little bit cropped I mean I planned it to to make it more cropped because uh, I like cropped tops and I like really the yoke I think it's really nice and elegant some of you know that I am diving into the the world of plant-based fibers and learning about them and it's just um there is so much to learn but what i what i noticed with the different plant-based fibers i knitted with is that the garments after being blocked are very very different from the unblocked garments that's i think that's amazing because the, the, it is not that the yarn blooms so much it's not like wool that the yarn can bloom you know a bit but it's just that the shape of the garment is a lot more put together <laughs> I don't know how to explain it uh, but I yeah that's that's something that I found out I like this I was actually thinking to gift it to my mother or my sister or a friend because I wasn't when I tried it I was like it's too either bulky or it doesn't really fit on me so much um, but I tried it before block blocked and um, now that I blocked it I'm like I like it I'm gonna keep it for myself so <laughs> it has some mis like they're not really mistakes but it's just the detention that kind of um, changed somehow in some parts um, but I really like it and this uh, textile I achieved it by holding together two uh, yarns one was a linen cone a lace linen yarn and one was a kind of it was a bit thicker than the linen one and it was 100% Egyptian cotton so I'm gonna put back my cardigan. This is another uh, cardigan that I wore uh, probably many times in my videos <laughs> and I bought it um, secondhand and I really like it. I added some of the handmade buttons that I made. I really like this garment. This is the Anchor Summer Tea Summer Shirt by Petite Knit and it's I think it's a really really good pattern especially if you are kind of a beginner or you want a pattern that is very easy to follow um, the yoke it's, it's fairly easy it's super easy and it's top down which is kind of my favorite construction so beautiful beautiful pattern I think that this kind of mm, very simple textured yoke give such an elegant vibe or such a yeah it's, I think it's very elegant um, I want to knit it in white as well like maybe a creamy white not like super white and one of um, the friends who participate participated to the knit welcome spring knit along which is by the way still running 
Um, we are not super active on Discord. We have a Discord group, uh, but it's really nice. And I am going to share uh, with their permission. I asked their permissions, but some of the beautiful people that participated to this Welcome Spring It Along um, shared their photos of their projects. So by the end of the of this episode, I'll put just a bit of music and their pictures of the beautiful projects that they knit. I got so much inspiration and one of them, I think Vanessa, she knitted the same garment um, in white and it looked so stunning. It looked beautiful. There were so many beautiful projects. I got so much inspiration and like, I almost wanted to cast on many of the projects they are were knitting, uh, but then I kind of <sighs> calmed myself down and being like, you're surrounded by webs. Just keep yourself together. <laughs> so, but I, I definitely, definitely, definitely uh, got so much inspiration from, from uh, that group. But if you want to join a very chilled, very, dreamy and inspiring group i'll leave the link in the description box but so this garment i knitted it for the welcome spring knit along there is another garment that i'm going to show you that you probably already seen um, that i knitted for this welcome spring knit along because one is not enough right and uh, yeah so let's keep moving because I've been talking for a while now and I just showed one garment. Okay, this next finish object, I've worn it already probably 10 times since I finished it. Um, I, it, this is kind of my design, I didn't follow any pattern and I called it my orange blossom, my orange tree blossom whatever, uh, on Raverly because I really like this color and it reminds me of, of the orange tree uh, that has beautiful oranges and this white, it reminds me of the flower of the orange tree. And I have knitted this top using a Anchor Style cotton yarn. Anchor Style is a German yarn I believe and it was when I bought it I wasn't really you know amazed by the yarn itself like the the the, the fiber itself is is nothing super special it's just a cotton based yarn 100% cotton but I was really really attracted by this color which is um kind of like a goldeny rust rustic golden color Yes, I knitted it bottom up, so I decided to add this white on the bottom. It has this kind of ruffle M, and I used drops muscat for the white part, the bottom hem. Um, I think it's really nice. Um, I wore it with jeans, a normal, um, very simple linen skirt, beige linen skirt. I really like this garment. I really like this design. Um, it was a super easy design. What I've done, I think I cast it on, on needle size four, maybe millimeters. And I cast it on 144. Uh, stitches and then I start knitting it around and then at some point when I wanted to divide and like for the holes for the harms sorry I decided to knit start knitting flat half of the garment uh, so 72 stitches and then I divided those 72 stitches again and I started the decreasing for each of the, this 
shoulder straps, whatever you call them. Sorry, today my brain doesn't process English apparently. And I did kind of the same for the back. The back, as you can see, is a tiny bit higher up. You know, doesn't really matter so much, but then I can see what what part I should wear, you know. Well, I love this garment and I'm probably need, going to knit many more of this because it's so useful and it's so, it looks really nice. It looks really nice. It doesn't maybe uh, have so many, you know, it doesn't have so much fuzz. Uh, the cotton yarn, for some reason, is peeling up a little bit. I mean, the cotton yarn, it's okay. This cotton yarn is not like, you know, the most amazing yarn ever, but um, it's all right and is doing the thing that I wanted to do. <laughs> and uh, I'm really, really pleased with this garment, especially the color especially this beautiful color. And then I have another, this is a very small accessory that I knitted in one evening because I really, because I had the yarn, I still had a little bit of this um, left from this top. And so I wanted to knit a headband to have it um, because I have three headbands that I knitted for myself and I knitted them with animal based fibers uh, so they're very warm but I I need something for the you know warmer weather um, to wear and also to if I want to wash my face in the morning <laughs> it's nice to you know keep my bangs up um, so I decided to knit a headband and it's this one, and I used this yarn and a mohair and cotton based fiber that I had in my stash. And I am not, I don't think that the pattern shows up as it would if I wouldn't have used mohair. Is it correct English now? I'm not sure. Anyhow, um, I think. So this is the, the pattern, <laughs> sorry, need to center, Martina. Uh, so this is the Amber Headband by Mirella Moments. It's a free pattern and it, I think it just came out and um, it has this beautiful, I don't know if you can see it because it keeps folding, but it has this beautiful kind of simple lace um, design and um, but as you can see this headband is very drapey it's very it doesn't hold together it doesn't have so much structure it's just like oh, very relaxed <laughs> like me in the morning I guess <laughs> but um, so I don't know if this pattern if I love this garment, I mean, I'm, I've been using it every morning to keep my air out of the way while washing it. Let me just show you. Wow. <laughs> so, it's just, it doesn't really, I don't know, it's not really, I think that if I would have used, um, a thicker yarn like a cotton based or even a linen based but something that has a little bit more structure than this really thin uh, mohair plus cotton yarn then I would have seen the pattern a bit more the, the design of the pattern does it make sense what I'm saying but yeah I think it's um it's cute, it's cute, it does its thing. Um, I'm using it in the morning, I'm using it here and there. It's all right, it does its things. 
and I really recommend the pattern. It's beautiful. It's for free. If you need, if you want some, uh, you know, cute headband, um, Mirella Moments website. I think I found it on our website. It um, has so many beautiful headband patterns, and this just came out. I think in March or something, and it's called the Ember headband for free nice easy um, and I think I'll knit it in green as well and see how it will look maybe for as as a gift or something we'll see so I had three finished objects for now there is a fourth one and I that I finished in the past two weeks um, but I gifted it to this friend and so I don't have it with me. It was a kind of improvised, a bit modified repo bralette by Jesse Made the Design. I see if I have a clip and I'll put it on the screen. Otherwise you can just see the, the finish object in my previous, in the previous video, which is a vlog uh, that I just posted. It was a green top with the yarn drops muscat and it looked really beautiful that like that yarn even if it's a cotton based so very simple type of fiber um, it has some sort of shine to it that makes the garment that you knit um, makes the garment really elegant and I want to show you this one I showed it last time as a finished object but it wasn't 100% finished because I had to add the buttons. I made an entire video dedicated to this garment. Um, I'm gonna do more videos like that in the future where I focus on only one garment and I show you the start, the journey and the end <laughs> of making a garment and um, I, I've done that with this top and I really enjoyed to make that video so I added on this I added my my buttons that I made as you can see they're all very different or quite different from one another which I really like um, so yeah that's also another kind of finish object. So this is the leaf top. And talking about the leaf top, I decided to cast on another one. Uh, and I cast it on about two weeks ago. Uh, I brought with me two yarns when we traveled up north. Uh, we stayed the 10 days in the north of Italy. And I brought with me two yarns, like two projects. One was the Ripple Bralette that I finished and one was this beautiful yarn, which I think is also very, it's a very interesting yarn, but it's so stiff. And it's this yarn, it's a linen, 100% linen cone. I cast it on the leaf top, another one, <laughs> um, because I really wanted to have one in linen that one was 100 percent cotton yarn so i've been knitting on the left panel i believe yeah it's the left panel you knit it in pieces so i've been knitting on the left panel i'm i'm almost done once you start knitting with this yarn like after a while you get the hand of it and you you continue to do it um, but in the beginning it's so stiff it has no elasticity it's just no flexibility it's super stiff this type of yarn has so much integrity like what you see it is you know it doesn't it's just what it is it just has so much structure it's so strong and um, I think it will, once I start, I block it uh, and wash it, it will look really nice. And I think linen is one of my favorite plant-based yarns because it's super strong and it's so fresh. 
uh, here it gets so hot in Italy uh, in the summer uh, so it's really nice to have something that is kind of very fresh so this is the lift top um, and as you can see in the back it has this sort of bubbles but I think that when you when I'll wash it it will kind of hold another hold a bit more the shape and have more structure I realized that because I did a bit of a research on linen and hemp based fibers and these cones especially have been used to make carpets and bags and uh, belts um, so I think if you want to make um, a good you know strong bag you can uh, you can use something like this because it's super strong and it's very firm and dry and sturdy um, but I don't care I'm gonna knit garments with this <laughs> maybe one day I'll also make an accessory with with this yarn but for now I'll knit on this I haven't done so much in the past days on this I haven't knit on it uh, because I'm focusing on another project um, which is a little bit of a secret uh, <laughs> I'll talk about that project soon I don't want to be like you know mysterious or anything but um, it's a collaboration so I have to you know um, communicate with the person I'm collaborating with or the company I'm collaborating with before mentioning everything and so on. so it's just like technical things um, but so I've been focusing in the past five days a week or something I've been focusing on that project so as a whip work in progress we, we have the, uh, the leaf top in linen that I just showed you I'm checking my notes then we have another project that is super it was super interesting to start I really wanted I really wanted to knit something with this yarn <laughs> Uh, that I'm just uh, I'm gonna show you um, so last episode I showed you the look at my holes uh, by James and Watts I started that garment and it kind of um, it, it got I got kind of addicted to it it was so fun to knit on that garment however uh, I didn't really like the the, the textile that it was being created I mean the pattern was beautiful but the textile this kind of cotton dried cotton yarn I didn't like it so I, I frogged it uh, even if it was a lot of work but I decided to cast on the same pattern but with a very very different yarn very special yarn uh, so I just started this project, so I haven't knitted on this as much. I'm just knitting the yoke. Um, but I'm using a very, very special yarn. Sorry, two yarns holding them together. These two. This one is a massive cone and this is 100% hemp. And this is 100% linen and I'm holding these two yarns together they are the same color yeah they are um, this one the hemp one it's so stiff it's like inc incredibly stiff whereas the linen one I can feel that it's still dry and stiff but it has some sort of like just a memory of softness <laughs> Whereas this is just like, I can see the hemp plant in this yarn. Um, but yeah, it's 100% hemp. And I don't know, maybe it's just that I'm super excited about hemp. I have some hemp clothes and I just love them so much. And I love hemp in general. It's such a sustainable and regenerative plant. 
and material is amazing for you can use it with in so many ways you can make you know beauty products and you can make um, insulation materials or building materials out of hemp you can make textile it's just so such an amazing plant and it grows so fast with no need of pesticides no need of so much water as cotton that needs so much water to grow so hemp and linen amazing uh, however knitting on them is not you know the most pleasurable but i think that once you train your hands and you understand you make your hands understand that it's a different experience we are not knitting something soft we're knitting something drier but it's with so much integrity then your hands will understand and will start to love these fibers and i think um, this pattern is really one of the perfect patterns for this type of fabric because it's just you know it's not plain stockinette it's so it's like a fun little garment um, so it's kind of like a little bit like a fishnet um, so I think it's it's nice to knit on this pattern with this fiber so I'm really happy I chose this pattern and these fibers together these two fibers uh, together work really well it will make an indestructible garment uh, or indestructible accessory so we can you can also make bags and belts and um, pot holders and i think this is really good to weave something like carpets as well um, but i got so much this is such a huge cone and this i got it uh, from um, an italian company called Campolmi Roberto Filati which is based in Florence so I'm slowly knitting on this um, because it's an experience and I'm not in a rush at all but I've been uh, enjoying it here and there and I noticed that I have I don't have so many project bags at all. This is my only real project bag that I made for myself. And I think it's really cute and I use it a lot, but I would like to have more project bags. Um, we'll see if I'll have time to make them or buy them, we'll see. Okay, so next project, <sighs> calm down. So when I, um, when I was in, up in the north of Italy, I finished the Ripo bralette and I kind of wanted to make another one. I wanted to have a bralette, a Ripo bralette that had a lighter color because the ones that I have are in brownish color. So I went on a local yarn store close to where my mom is living and I got this don't look at the, the condition of this skin <laughs> but I got this which is organic cotton uh, yarn by Lane du Nord and uh, Lane du Nord uh, it's um, an Italian company I don't know why they have this French name but it's pretty nice and fancy um, and this is 100% cotton and you can definitely feel it however it's softer than the normal cottons yarns plus it's organic so I was like all right <laughs> I'm trying not to buy too much cotton yarns because I still have some I don't know it's not super fun to knit on it but still it's good I think I'll have to pause soon but 
this one I really I I bought it because the shade I mean this the color is really nice it's really like a baby pink um, and I decided to cast on a Ripple Bralette but so I'm gonna show you and just don't look I'm using crazy things okay how do I hold this <laughs> how do I hold this together maybe like that and then there is the back which is already done okay so it's not the best way to show you this project I guess um, but so I knitted the bralette with needle size 4 because I didn't have a thinner needle when I was up there I just had a 4 one so I started to knit with that but it creates the gauge is a little bit a little bit more loose which is totally okay and to be honest I call it ripple bralette but I haven't followed the pattern I didn't really I mean I know how the pattern is structured but I don't know this amount of stitches I don't remember how many I you have to cast on and cast off and so on but I know more or less this how the construction of it okay so I copy the construction because I remembered it but I didn't follow the pattern does that make sense like I cast it on the amount of num of stitches I wanted to cast on without checking the pattern um, and that's the back I'm doing a higher back what's happening here sorry this is just so bad to show you like this but this is the back and the front is gonna have like a v-neck I just finished almost finished one side and I'm gonna do the other one and it's super quick but as you can see these two different colors is slightly different so this one the bottom part is the yarn that I just showed you organic cotton this is the color size color number zero two and then I saw in my stash I had unraveled a prog I unraveled a project frogged it um, which was the yes top I frogged it because I didn't like it was too drapey this yarn sorry for this condition of this skein sorry you don't really see how beautiful this yarn is I'm sorry um, so I unraveled uh, a project frogged it and I got a skein of this yarn which is Leo Cell, which is an eucalyptus based yarn uh, this is Borgo de Pazzi Hanna the name of this yarn and I like a lot this is super soft like this is one of the softest plant-based fibers that I have ever tried however it's too drapey if you knit with only one strand unless you use needle size 2 <laughs> millimeters um, it's just too drapey like it's nice depending on the garment you want to do you want to knit on anyhow Never mind. I decided to pair this two together, these two together, for the upper part, so from the breast up. And I think it was a really good idea. Maybe not everyone would agree or would like that, but it kind of creates. Of course, since it's two strands of yarns and not one anymore, it creates a thicker fabric which gives a lot of um, coverage so it's really good you don't maybe need to wear a bra like it was really nice for me to pair these two yarns together and it creates this kind of nice fabric I wish I knitted the entire garment pairing these two yarns together but I think it's still gonna sorry this condition of this top is just a mess <laughs> it's just a mess but I think it's gonna be 
it's gonna be really nice, really firm on the on the top, but still very soft. Um, I'm happy and it's very subtle. I mean, you can definitely see that it's two different, two slightly different color, but it's subtle. It's not just like a, you know, a big of a contrast. So I think if I give this project a little bit more love, like maybe one evening, then I'll be done with it. This is a bag that I got. It's like a, a travel bag, something like that. Um, and I'm keeping my project inside this. But it's not really a project bag, I guess. Anyhow, I'm getting, I'm getting super tired. Okay, so we're done. We're almost there. Okay, the, um, I have another project that I, I'm just gonna quickly show you, but I'm not gonna tell you anything about the project or the yarn. I'm sorry, I will very soon, trust me. Uh, this is another project I have been knitting on the past five days, I guess, four, four day, five days, five days. Um, it doesn't really tell anything, so <laughs> just to show you that I, I'm working on another project. And this yarn, oh my goodness, but I'll share more very soon <laughs> uh, about this project. It feels weird to keep, to kind of like show, but then don't tell, <laughs> sorry. And I'm keeping it into my one and only project bag. So that's another whip that I'm very focusing on my secret project as I wrote in my knitting journal. Then I have in this bag that I designed <laughs> when I was in school, I kept this project that now, as you can see, I'm frogging and it feels it feels, it's really, it smells good. Um, it feels really like freeing to frog this project. However, I spent so much time knitting on this, like a week and more, I guess. Um, but I made this, um, this project, it was like a, a bottom up sweater, I guess, I thought, I would make like a, a t-shirt, but then it was, look how big it is, and then it stretches, and I don't know, I didn't feel any more connection to it, so I decided to frog it, and I I was using, sorry for the condition of this skein, but I was using this, which is the yarn I just showed you, Borgo de Pazzi, Hanna, Leo Cell Eucalyptus Base Fiber, paired together with this mohair, funny mohair and cotton yarn. And these two created this really nice and drapey fiber. However, it doesn't talk to me anymore. So I'm frogging it and uh, it feels strange, but it's okay. And since this yarn, like the mohair is really like attached to the other yarn, I decided to create a skein where these two yarns are together. <laughs> um, so my idea, I think I'll use these yarns together um, with also maybe uh, some of the wool skeins that I have maybe your the alpaca skein that I have in my stash and make a really cozy cardigan or a sweater in the autumn, something like that. So it will be really warm and nice, but also have a nice shininess to it uh, because of the eucalyptus fiber. So that's the idea. 
So that was another whip that I am frogging. And I, I mean, I knitted quite a lot. I knitted, I think, five or ten more centimeters. Um, but then I started to frog it. I'm just going to quickly talk about some plans for the future. And then I'm just going to wrap it up. Because I've been talking for an hour now. <sighs> poor, poor future me who has to edit this super long ass podcast. Okay, today I've been feeling chatty. <sighs> okay, some plans for the future. Let me read what I wrote. Um, so I want to knit more home accessories. Um, like pot holders for example and I bought some crochet hooks in wood oh. um, when I was up in the north and so I want to maybe crochet them or even knit them you know they're always super beautiful super useful and it's nice to have more than than two I have two of them plus one I knitted myself I crocheted myself so I want to knit more home accessories like pot holders and dish towels. Even if I'm like, why would I spend so much time just for knitting a dish towel? But I think it will, it will be beautiful. Um, <laughs> and then I want to knit for myself and for my sister, so two in different yarns, different colors, whatever, a makeup bag. Not super big, but like, you know, a rectangular, easy makeup bag with the zipper and sew the zipper on it. Um, I think it would be super easy, you know, you just, I probably just have to knit like a panel and then fold it or two panels and then sew them together. Um, Look how beautiful this yarn is. Uh, so that's fun. I want to knit a very firm, nice makeup bag. Maybe crochet it with some of the, you know, hemp or linen fibers that I have. It would be fun. <sighs> then I would like to knit when it comes to garments. Of course, I have many garments that I want to knit in the future but the ones that I want to give the priority to once I finished my whips because I have so many whips that I need to give some love to I want to knit a bra like a, a bra and I'm in decided between the basic bra by Naked Knit or the Aphrodite bralette or bra and those two are very cute designs and I think they look so cozy and comfortable for my ladies. So the basic bra I think would be my choice, probably. Uh, but we'll see, we'll see. And then I also bought a, a pattern called Retro Button by Vitra Design, uh, so I want to knit that one as well, which is just a very simple cardigan style top um, with, with the buttons. And last but not least, I want to knit the another Anchor Summer Tea by Petite Knit in a whiter yarn. But uh, let me finish ripping back this and just eat something, maybe. We'll see. What is this? So, thank you so very much for joining me again and for all of your amazing, kind comments on all of my videos. Like, I'm just flabbergasted. <laughs> I'm just so thankful. Sorry, I just feel a little bit busy. I've been talking so long, so I'm just like... Um, but I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful for the community 
the knitting community to be part of it and for so many amazing people, you, you know, um, you always, always supported me from the start. Um, so thank you and uh, see you next time. I'll put now at the end of the video some of the images of the spring garments people uh, knitted for uh, the welcome spring knit along. So if you get, want to get some inspiration, just stick around. Bye, see you next time.